Hi, this is Jeff Johnson, creator of Weathermaker. I'm here to talk to you about temporal reprojection. This is a new feature that was added in Weathermaker 5. It's primarily used with the new volumetric clouds, and I wanted to go over it in its own tutorial video because it's something fairly new to me, and I think new in general in games. It's a way to spread the rendering of a complex effect over multiple frames without having to render every pixel every frame. So let's dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and click Run. And if you haven't watched the performance profile video, I highly suggest you do that to learn about performance profiles. Right now I'm using the Fantastic Profile, which has no downsampling of the volumetric clouds, and then 4x4 temporal reprojection, which is a grid of 4x4 pixels. So it takes 16 frames to fully render out the clouds, and, and then it cycles through the pixels again. And if you haven't watched the Volumetric Cloud tutorial, that's also a good one to watch after you've watched this one, if you haven't already. So let's go ahead and make some Volumetric Clouds. Alright, so we've got a nice fluffy Volumetric Clouds in the sky. And let's go ahead and change our temporal reprojection to something higher. You'll notice that made the clouds a little bit more blurry and blocky, but that's because we're spreading out an 8x8 eight eight grid of pixels now. So it takes almost a full second, or actually a little more than a full second, to spread the cloud rendering out, which is not great. So a 4x4 four four grid will do 16 frames, which is about a quarter of a second. So not bad. It looks pretty good. If I change it to none, you can kind of see how the clouds get a little more crisp but it's not super big difference here and the great thing is you get 16x the performance basically there's a little overhead so it's not quite 16x but it's so much faster to use this temporal reprojection and you get a huge performance boost so in Weathermaker I've done two different temporal reprojection modes so let's go to the clouds in the prefab and I'll show you what I mean. There's this new temporal reprojection material. I've got one specifically for the clouds. And on this material, the parameter you really care about is this blend mode parameter for the temporal reprojection. And we've got a zero, which is a blur mode. That's what we're using now. You've also got a one, which is a sharp mode. So in blur mode, the camera is actually not jittered, so the pixel that renders is basically the same every time. As the clouds move, those pixels stay where they were until the next temporal reprojection update, but the actual pixel that's rendering is the same. And that, that may not make a lot of sense to you right now, but basically it means as the clouds move, uh, those pixels kind of get varied a little bit. Um, as the clouds are static, the, the same pixels rendering and then blurring with the neighboring pixels to produce kind of an approximation of what the full image would be. So let's go ahead and change this to be sharp, and I'll show you the difference here. In sharp mode, every pixel is rendered separately with a jittered camera frustum so that it looks identical to the non-temporal reprojection mode. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this and restart it. When you change this parameter, you have to restart play mode. <clears throat> so watch as the clouds come in. You, If you paid attention, you could kind of see a tiny little bit of grid show up when those clouds appeared. So I think if I turn those off and come back in, no, that didn't do it. So let's hide them and show them again. Just watch carefully. You can kind of see a tiny little grid very subtle but you'll notice these clouds look a little bit sharper than the blur mode temporal reprojection clouds and that's even with a gauge and blur of 17 let's turn off this blur and these clouds look pretty sharp but now as I hide them there we go the grids showing up a quite a bit more now because I've turned off my gauge and blur so watch as they come in now there we go. So the Gaussian blur is pretty amazing and allows hiding a lot of the artifacts of temporal reprojection. So in sharp mode, there's actually no difference in the final image versus a non-temporal reprojection, except that 
it takes a few frames to catch up. So let's turn on some cloud velocity here and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see on the edges of the clouds, this temporal reprojection is taking a few frames to catch up with the final image. Again, this is without the Gaussian blur. When you turn on the Gaussian blur 17, it really hides a lot of the artifacts of this temporal reprojection. Now the temporal reprojection sharp mode looks a little better, but there are a few downsides. Um, for example, if you have rapidly changing lighting conditions, it can look a little funny. Um, as I move the sun, you can kind of notice a little bit of jumping and blurring of the clouds. That's me in my shader code trying to make sure there's no artifacts as the lighting changes, but there's, there's going to be a little bit because you're not rendering all those pixels every frame. In the blur mode, it blurs all the pixels together using just the current pixel and so you're up to date every frame basically but in sharp mode it takes you in this case I'm doing 4x4 four four temporal reprojection so it takes 16 frames to catch up but again with the Gaussian blur you can hide most of that <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and go to dark cloud mode and go to a night view and you can kinda see what I mean these trees here are using vertex lighting which it kind of ignores some of the the sunlight here so they're great for performance but not so great for light nighttime rendering so just ignore that I'm gonna turn my sound off I'm gonna create some lightning bolts here so beware the screens gonna flash here but you can kind of see a little bit you can see as that lightning fade faded out you could notice the temporal reprojection grid a little bit so that's one of the downsides is that when you have rapidly changing lighting conditions you can kind of see that grid a little bit. Now it's not super noticeable and if you have a daytime scene and you really want those crisp nice looking clouds then go ahead and switch this to sharp mode and just make sure that Gaussian Blur 17 is on. This is going to look the best. However if you just want general uh, temporal reprojection that you know won't have any artifacts, you can leave this at the default of zero. I know that's a little bit confusing. There's a lot to go in. Temporal reprojection was very new to me. I didn't even know about it two months ago when I started these clouds. But it's a very fascinating thing and there's a lot more research to be done in how to how to get rid of kind of these artifacts that you saw there with the with the lightning and rapidly changing light conditions and so I'll be Continuing to improve this as I learn more and hear about other people, what work other people are doing. Hopefully, we can all learn together and improve this because as we move to 4K and perhaps someday 8K gaming, I think temporal reprojection will be super important to make sure that we can render these kinds of special effects without bringing the GPU to its knees. So, as always, please ask me any questions. Uh, I'm happy to, to discuss what's going on here, and thanks so much for watching. Please send me an email, support at digitalruby.com, if you have any questions about the temporal reprojection or see any issues with it. It's pretty new, so if you find a glitch, uh, send me an email or post on the Discord, and I'll be happy to take a look. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day.